Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is Rich Kitzman and I've been going through a teaching on the prophet. And I've gone through three. We've talked about the foundation um, part of the prophet and how they're called. And then we talked about uh, some of the functions. And today I'm going to start on qualities. There's going to be just uh, this session and one more, I believe, and then that'll wrap up this about the prophet. But, you know, let us learn a lot about the prophet because it's very important that the prophet be in the midst of, his, of the people of God uh, in a local church. Or at least if the local church doesn't have one, then have one come in and spend some time there so that their influence can, can um, have, a, have a place in the church itself. But I'm going to talk about qualities today. And, and if you're enjoying these, if you could share um, hit like or subscribe and subscribe. That'd be great. Um, so anyway, I'm going to talk about the qualities and another way of saying this is what makes the prophet tick? You know, what is it about him that makes him different, um, and makes him of, um, real practical to the body of Christ. And it's very, and when God, according to God, who you are, who you are, takes precedence on, on your doing. And what I mean by that is, uh, we, the, the character of a person is more important than their ministry. So who you are, uh, should come from, should be involved in the doing. The ministry is not the mo most important feature. The most important feature is you and what God is accomplishing you, how he's developed his, his character in you. And from that should flow the ministry. Now, if the ministry receives more important attention than it should, then, then the character, eventually, and usually it's sooner, <clears throat> the ministry is going to be sabotaged. It'll stop. It'll, be, it'll, start, to, it'll start to fail in some way. And we, we see this, uh, I'll go through a character. I just had a thought, I, I was, some of the things I'm gonna cover about the prophet is how they spend time in the presence of the Lord. And, um, and that's, just, that's not just a, po a prophet, but that, that should be all of us spending time in the presence of the Lord. And here, I know, I just wanna give a testimony that I spend quite a bit of time in prayer and recently the Lord's been speaking to me about going down in and praying for one of my neighbors my neighbor had uh was found to have uh some sickness due to covid that has hit them probably a year or two ago and so i felt like the lord's been speaking to me go down and pray for that person so we called and we told the person what we would we want to come down and pray for them and and they said well please come down so we went down yesterday and we sat down and we talked for a long time, just talked. And then I brought up the whole thing about how God moves, how God heals. I gave several testi testimonies of people that have been healed in the past, of uh, people that my wife and I have prayed for. And so while we were sitting there, the husband said, I have a, my back hurts. And I said, okay. So we prayed for his wife and, and then we went over and prayed for the husband and both of them experienced heat. Uh, many times people will experience like the area where it's being affected that's not right or get hot. And that's usually an indication that the Spirit of God is working. And so I asked them uh, if they felt anything. They both said that. And the husband said, you know, my back even is feeling somewhat better, but not completely. So I said, well, let's pray again. And so we prayed again and we got done. And he says, my back feels great. And he got up out of his chair and we went outside and they bid us farewell. But he said, my back feels great. Thanks for coming over and praying. So spending time in the presence of God is, is extremely important because it gives us direction. The Holy Spirit will give us direction, things to do. And we have to, we have to develop that discipline of spending time in, in God's presence. And as we do that, you really feel like you know, it's, it becomes almost, it becomes normal. You just want to go and do that and spend time with him. Now, I was, I was talking about character. So if, a, if the character in a person isn't developed, then you end up with a prophet like Samson, for example, in the Old Testament. He, he would spend time developing some character, but he's also very carnal. 
And as a result of that, the, the full, the things that God wanted him to do, the things that God had called him to was to bring Israel into uh, victory. He didn't accomplish that entirely. He did some great feats in the Lord, but he, but in the end, he ended up, he ended up in jail at, at his, at his enemies not accomplishing everything he was supposed to accomplish. So we you do we do want to let the character develop in our lives. Another prophet that I just want to make note of is Enoch. Enoch is is mentioned in a Jude 14 that he was a prophet and he was prophesying about issues uh to to the Israelites at that time. He and it doesn't say what the issues were, but he was he was speaking into the Israelites as a prophet will do. Um, now we have to, we have to make sure we don't confuse what I just said about prophesying because under the new covenant, it says all of us can prophesy, but in the old Testament, the prophets were the ones who prophesied. They were the ones who carried out this exercise of prophesying to, to the, to the nation, to Kings and so on. And, um, so we, we have to not confuse that because when we come into the New Testament, there, there's definitely an elevation, I'll say it that way, an elevation where the believers, if you go back to the history and, and under Israel, they never prophesied. Even though, even though Saul was seen and he prophesied, but the, the difference was Saul was in the company of the prophets. So the influence of the prophets affected him. And some wondered if he was a prophet, but he was a king and he was not a prophet. Um, so back to Enoch, he, he had fellowship with God, it says, for 300 years, unbroken fellowship. And I find that amazing because here's a, here's a guy who is an early, early prophet and he is setting the stage for the prophets in the future, uh, for the future generations. And he didn't really, and he wasn't made that way. It says that he walked with God 300 years, but he didn't decide to walk with God until he was 65. So there's, it's never too late to get serious with God. Uh, now I want to switch from Enoch to Abraham. And we know Abraham was called a friend of God. So that's a quality uh, in developing a relationship with God. Prophets many times can become, they become very acquainted with God. They become, they have an intimate relationship with the Lord. Um, and so I'm just going to talk about Abraham and some of the things that happened. You'll find a lot of this in Genesis 20. But Abraham was called by God. He went out. He he obeyed God, and he went to the places where God told him. The first one of the first places he went to was there was a ruler there, uh, Amalek. He ruled the country, and Abraham kind of came into his area, and uh, this this guy took his wife who he thought was his sister to have as his own and abraham didn't say anything about that and um anyway so god stepped in and when when he was sleeping amalek was sleeping he had a dream and in this dream he's being confronted by god he said you and your servants are going to die uh, because you've taken this woman who belongs to abraham and it's his wife and then amalek right away says well i didn't know it was his wife he didn't tell me that and he says, I know, but I, I'm keep, I kept you from her, is what it, I think is what it says in that chapter. And so he explains to him that they're going to die. And right away, Amalek repents. And he, he goes to Abraham, and not only does he take his wife back to him, but he takes to him many gifts. And then another thing that happens is all the women in that, in that area became barren because of this. And so Amalek had a call for Abraham to come in, <coughs> excuse me, and pray for the, for the area for the women. And they, and, and they, and that left then. So he was, so, so Amalek came across the man who had access to God. That's another quality of a prophet. They have access to God and the prayers that they pray are answered. That's another one that, you know, when, when prophets pray, they usually get their prayers answered because they're communing with God. So in, when, it come, when it talks about Abraham being a friend of God, that's verified. And I'm just going to give you the scriptures on this. Second Chronicles 20, uh, chapter 20, verse 7. And also in James 2, uh, verse 23, you can see that he was called a friend of God. Now, 
Because he was a friend of God, God gave him things, spoke to him. And in one episode, it says that it says uh, in Genesis, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? And God asked himself, and he, and he says, no, he shared secrets with Abraham. So what God was getting ready to do was to bring judgment down on Sodom and Gomorrah. <coughs> and he invited Abraham and told him what his secrets were, what he was going to do with Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham immediately responded the way he should have. He began to pray for Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, Sodom and Gomorrah were, were destroyed, but his intercessory prayer actually saved Lot and his family from being destroyed as, um, because, because of his praying, his intercession. Uh, so so a Abraham, in being a friend of God, he was intimate. That's a, this earmarks, this is an earmarking quality that prophets have a close relationship or an intimate relationship with God. And that's what he had. Um, he would reveal secret plans to him. Now, I just want to mention here that there's, there's, a, there's quite a bit of overlap when you're looking at the Old Testament and then you come into the New. It's so, we are so privileged to live in the days that we are, that we understand the old and then we can see how things change going into the new. So what happened here, it's, it's mentioning about God displaying secrets to Abraham. And the, so we can think, well, today that means God only shows secrets to Abraham, but that's not true, or to prophets. Because in, in Matthew 13, 11, it says that we, the believers, are, are to know the secret, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God. And so we've been invited, all believers have been invited by the Father to come and, and spend time with him so that, and he will reveal secrets to all of us as well, if we want, and if we're willing to spend time in his presence and wait upon him. Uh, and so that's, so that's change going from the old to the new. Now, I'm not saying then that all of us are prophets. This is why in the New Testament, and I've referred to this already, that we are a prophetic people. And we're a prophetic people because we are actually engaging in some of the uh, uh, functions that the prophet did in the Old Testament. And we're participating in some of those in the New Testament, which, call it, which makes us a prophetic people, but it does not make us prophets necessarily. <clears throat> and then as time goes on with Abraham, God begins to reveal more and more things to him. And he has times with him of just of displaying things that would have, that could have staggered Abraham, but it didn't. And he, at one point he says, look up into the sky and look at the stars, count the stars if you can. Of course you can't. And so he, he says, that's how plentiful your descendants are going to be. Then he said, look to the north, south, east, and west. And he said, everything you can see is going to be yours. It's all going to be yours. It's going to belong to you. Another time he, he said, look at the sand on the seashore. Can you count all the sand? Go ahead and try to count all the sand. And he couldn't. He says, that's how your descendants will be. There's, there's going to be so many. So he kept sharing. The father kept sharing his secrets with his servant, Abraham. And Abraham um, understood then the plans of God. And a matter of fact, in Amos 3, 7, it says this. And we, we really need to realize the, the position the prophet carries. And it says, Surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets. <coughs> and so we, so we can see that God has set aside for his prophets to know of his secrets. But in, again, we as the people of God also are allowed to know the secrets of God. The next person I want to talk about is the man of God, and that's Moses. Something that earmarked Moses different from all the other prophets is he saw God, he saw God and talked to him face to face. That wasn't normal. Matter of fact, in, in Numbers 12, 6 through 8, and I'm going to read this, it says, and God explains how he reveals himself to, to the prophet. It says, I reveal myself to a prophet in visions. I speak to them in dreams. But this is not the true, this is not true of my servant Moses. With him, I speak face to face clearly and not in riddles. So Moses, uh, he, he saw him face to face. And otherwise, in the Old Testament, it was done by riddles and, and uh, 
uh, <laughs> by visions and and by dreams. Now, at this, you know, and and Moses was a very, a, a very much of an unusual prophet, and and actually it says that the that Jesus, the Messiah, was gonna was gonna come from he that he was. Moses was a great prophet, but and, and Messiah was coming and would be a prophet like Moses. And uh, that's in Deuteronomy eighteen fifteen. Now I want to I want to read another verse to you, and this is in Deuteronomy thirty four ten. It says, "Since then, no prophet has arisen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face." So that's a very unique situation back in the Old Testament. Uh, they knew each other and they talked face to face. So they had a very, they had a very intimate relationship. Now I want to talk about two expressions that I just, I just read. And the first one is the servant, servant Moses. Now what, what does that, when we say servant, what, what are we talking about exactly? Because it doesn't use that all the time. Sometimes it talks about different prophets. It'll reuse the word servant, but with Moses, it's used it quite often. And so, a first, for a person to be a servant, that means, a prophet to be a servant, that means their attitudes, their disposition, their, uh, have been dealt with. There's no self-possession, um, no self-importance, there's no independence of self. That stuff's been dealt with, and, and so that's how you become a servant. A servant is a person who waits on the Lord. They wait for directions. They wait to be told what they're supposed to do. And the reason they do that is because in the past, they haven't waited. And because they haven't waited, and again, in the beginning, our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. He's much higher than what we are, so much higher than what we are. We don't understand everything. We don't understand a lot of things about God. And so we have to not trust ourselves. And that's that's what a person who's a servant They've learned through mistakes. They've trusted themselves and it never works out. So they've learned just to wait. They're waiting for the master to tell them what to do so they don't mess it up. So they don't, as I'll say it this way, so they don't have to go around the mountain over and over and over. They've learned to wait until they know the direction that he's telling them to go. <coughs> Excuse me. The other expression is the man of God. Now it was a servant of God, now the man of God. The man of God is, is synonymous with the prophet. And many times in the Old Testament, Elijah, Elisha, Samuel, Moses, uh, David were referred to as the man of God. Sometimes in the scripture it would, say, it would say something like this, and the man of God came. It never gave a name, but the man of God means a prophet. And so that, that seems to indicate uh, somebody who, again, who has a very deep, intimate relationship with God, and God sends him out to do things. Another expression of the prophet is is an influencer. The prophet is an influencer. And just to explain, I'm going to use David in, in for this, but in, in uh, Psalms 27, 4, it says, One thing I ask, Lord, this is what I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon his beauty and to seek him in his temple. David found the presence of God to be very comforting. He was drawn to it. He, he would spend lots of time in the presence of God, and he would go and he would, he would seek the Lord in his temple, and he would spend time gazing, as it says, awestruck might be another way of saying it, in the presence of God. When he would get into the presence of God, he was just amazed by it. And he would stand there and, and, and he never experienced anything like it. And it was so amazing that he would go back again and again. And because he went back again and again, he began to be, he began to be changed. Did you know us being in the presence changes us? And in, in Psalms 84, 2, it says this about David. It says, my, this is after he's spending time in the presence of God over a period of time. He says, my soul yearns. So spending time in God's presence causes your soul to want to go back again and again. Even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Something was going on with David, even physically. 
And he was being impacted so much by being in the presence of God that he began, he, he, he did not want to stay away. It's like he was drawn to it more. The more you experience of the presence of God, the more you want to go back and you, want, you just want more. It, it, it doesn't stop. It works. It's, that's the way it works. And as a result, as we spend time in the presence of God, we begin to be influenced. We begin to be changed. We become, and as a result too, we get around people, we become contagious. The presence of God becomes contagious to others that are around us. And this, and so also absolutely in the presence of God, your character is being dealt with. You're becoming more and more like Christ. <coughs> it's, it's like Christ in you becomes greater and greater. And this is how, I want to emphasize this, this is how the prophetic people come about. Because when you get a person who just wants to spend time in the presence of God, and this is true of the prophet, and, it's not, and I want to say this too, it's also true of the apostles. They do the same thing. And so when people get around these kind of ministries, they begin to be influenced in a great way because they're, because they're able to distribute or influence the people around because they spent time in the presence. And it causes the people of God to want to spend time in the presence as well because they see the good in it. Um, also, we see, when we go back to the Old Testament, and especially with Elisha and Elijah, um, you, when you read the, the, about these two guys' lives, you'll find that there is what was called a school of prophet or, or the... Uh, it was also called something else, it seems like. The, son, oh, the sons of the prophets. They had, because of this influencing going on, they were impacting many of the people that ended up being, in the Old Testament, prophets as well. And so it caused this influx of people to be drawn into a relationship with God so that other prophets came about. And when the school of the prophets is going on, we know that when you go back and read it, and I'm not going to give you the, the scriptures, but it says that at one point they went out and built a, a place to, to house the prophets. There was getting to be so many of them that they had to build a dormitory to put them in. Um, also, they had to, uh, they, when Elijah was getting ready to be taken, Elisha is following closely after him. They come across the school of the prophets, and they already knew that Elijah was their master, as they called him, was about ready to be taken. So you could see that these men that had been influenced, they were now moving as prophets. And the same thing happens today with the prophetic amongst us today. And this, again, is why it's important that we, get, we, we spend time around people that we know are prophets because they are influencers. That's, a, that's an earmarking quality. They're influencers. <coughs> and I'm about ready to stop here. And, and when the prophet, um, I think it was Elijah, and when he went to the woman of Shunem, she saw something different in him. She referred to him as a holy man of God. And, and so, so I'm going to end there. Um, I'm really enjoyed talking to you about the prophet. Uh, next, this next session I come up with will probably be the last one on this. I hope you're enjoying it, and I'll see you at the next uh, time. Thank you.